friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have all new Halloween DIYs to share with you, but these DIYs are going to be a little extra special because they are all Halloween Pottery Barn dupes. These are very easy to recreate and they are an awesome way to get that beautiful look for less. But before we get started, if you are new here, please do consider subscribing down below. First DIY is actually my favorite from the whole video, and that is because I fell in love with this ghost pillow the second I saw it on the Pottery Barn website, but $80 was way too expensive, so we are going to recreate it for a lot less using this white faux Sherpa fabric that I picked up at Joanne Fabrics. Everything that I use in today's video, I'll be sure to link down below in the video description box. This pillow has a very simple design, but the first thing we have to do is create the body that's going to lay underneath that very blanket-like ghost. So to do that, I'm just taking a piece of computer paper here and I folded it in half and then in half again just to create a square here. And then I'm just going to cut out this shape. So this is pretty much like a football shape or a lemon shape. And this is just going to be my pattern. Now I was not too worried about this being exact because this part of the pillow is going to be covered by that top blanket layer of the ghost but I did want to start off with something roughly this shape. If you want a larger ghost pillow, you're just going to want to make this part of your pattern slightly larger, or you can even double it by just taping a couple pieces of paper together, and then basically just following those same steps to cut out a shape similar to this. So now that I have my pattern, I'm going to go ahead and cut out five pieces of fabric in this shape. Not really into sewing, this part can seem a little bit intimidating, but trust me, anyone can make this ghost pillow, it is very simple. So now I have all five pieces of my fabric cut out into that football shape, and now I just want to sew them together. So I want to sew them with the Sherpa side facing each other, we're going to turn it right side out when we're all done sewing. And you're going to be able to see when I have them all sewn together what I'm going to do here. But basically, you just want to sew each side to each other and then keep going. I hope that makes sense. I'm kind of showing it here so you can see how I just sewed them all together, basically facing each other. The one end, I did make sure to connect them all, but the other ends I did leave open. So I just didn't sew all the way down. That way I was able to reverse it when I was all done. So now I'm just going to flip it right side out. I used a sewing machine to sew my pieces together, but you can absolutely sew this by hand or even use hot glue if you would like to do a no sew pillow. This part of the pillow is not going to be seen, so do not worry about it looking perfect. We close it up, we do have to stuff it, and I wanted to just basically give my ghost a little bit of weight on the bottom. If you guys haven't used these before, these are awesome for that. You can also use some small rocks or some marbles, just something to weigh it down a little bit, but it is completely optional. Since this is a pillow, you might just want to fill it completely with polyfill. That way it is nice and fluffy. So after I put some poly pellets in the bottom, I just filled the rest with some polyfill. And now to close it up, you can just hot glue this closed or do a running stitch. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm just taking my needle and thread and basically you just want to keep running it kind of over and under the fabric and you're going to go all the way around the circle and then that way when you get to the end you can just pull and cinch it closed almost like a drawstring bag and then you can just place a couple of knots in there and I like to do a couple extra stitches just to make sure that it is nice and closed. I was so in love with the end result of this pillow I already know I'm going to be making a few more for family and friends. That the body of the ghost is complete, this is the really fun part. We get to take some more fabric and really create that ghost-like appearance. So I'm just going to take a piece of extra fabric here and lay it on top just so I can kind of see how big I want it to be. I reference that photo from the Pottery Barn website at this point just to make sure I was getting it exact and it does have a really long and billowy blanket ghost appearance. So once I was happy with the size, I just went ahead and trimmed it down. And now before we go ahead and attach this piece to the body, I wanted to cut out the eyes. That way I could make sure I got the placement right. You can use black felt for the eyes, but the one at Pottery Barn did actually have the black faux Sherpa. So I decided to pick up a really small piece of black faux Sherpa fabric from Joanne Fabrics. This is the smallest cut that they would give me just so I could get the eyes to look exactly like the one from Pottery Barn. So for this step, I'm just going to cut out two ovals and I just kept trimming them down until I was happy with the size. And then to attach them to that top blanket like fabric, you can either just hot glue them or sew them in place. Final step, I'm just putting a couple stitches 
into the body of the ghost. So I'm basically just going around in a few different spots and just securing that top blanket to the body with some really small stitches. But again, of course, you can just hot glue this in place if you would like to do a no sew pillow and that would work just as well. Here's a closer look at the final result. I think that this one turned out so cute. You guys have to let me know. What do you think? Do you think it's pretty spot on? I feel like it is, but let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I already know I'm gonna make a few more of these and I think the next one I make is going to be even bigger. This next DIY is so easy and is actually a Dollar Tree DIY. So everything I picked up is from Dollar Tree. And I wanted to recreate this really adorable ghost mug from Pottery Barn, but for a fraction of the price. So I picked up these two mugs at Dollar Tree, of course. But if you wanted something more similar to that Pottery Barn shape, you can definitely find something at Target or Walmart. Now I'm also going to be using this Dollar Tree vinyl paper. Now I do not have a cutting machine, but if you have a cutting machine, machine like a Cricut, you can get some really precise cuts out of this, but since I don't, I'm just going to be hand cutting it today. So I did want to show you if you do not have a cutting machine, you can still absolutely do this DIY. What you have to do is just cut out the eyes and the mouth out of this paper and it is self-adhesive. So after you cut out your shape, you can go ahead and just peel off that back. Box does say that this is permanent vinyl but I'm not sure how sticky it is compared to a different brand. So if you have a different brand vinyl that you use with a cutting machine, that would probably be sturdier than this one. I think this one works perfectly fine for a DIY, but I would steer clear of the dishwasher. For the eyes, I just cut out two oval shapes and the mouth on the Pottery Barn one was kind of like a teardrop shape. So I tried to mimic that as best as I could while still cutting it out by hand. And here is how they turned out. I think that this one is just such a fun and easy DIY. This next DIY was inspired by these faux Sherpa pillows at Pottery Barn. So we're not going to be making pillows, but I wanted to still get that same look and feel. So I'm going to be using these four foam pumpkins from Dollar Tree and then also these faux leather leaves from Dollar Tree. The Pottery Barn pillow didn't have any leaves, but I thought that these would be a really fun touch. This DIY is so easy and only takes a couple of minutes to recreate. So I'm going to be using that same fabric that I used in the first DIY. So this is that white faux Sherpa from Joanne Fabrics. I'm also going to be using that same fabric in a tan color. First thing you want to do is just lay out your fabric and cut out a square. So my square ended up being about 16 inches by 16 inches. And once I had that cut out, I just placed my first pumpkin on the inside of it. And then I need to remove that stem. So I found that a craft knife works really well for this. So you can just go ahead, cut a square out and remove the stem. Now you can take your fabric and start tucking it into the center of your pumpkin. As you go around, you wanna make sure that you're kind of folding the fabric over itself just to make sure that it is nice and neat. Some of you guys might remember that I did a DIY very similar to this in an earlier video a couple of months ago with some Halloween fabric from Dollar Tree. So you can actually do this DIY with any fabric of your choosing. So now that I have all of my faux Sherpa folded into the pumpkin, I'm just gonna be adding in one of those leaves. But again, these leaves are completely optional. I thought that they would just be a really fun touch. And now for the stem, all you have to do is just cut out a piece of felt fabric and then just roll it up. And then you can just insert that stem into that hole and it's going to hold all of that fabric and the leaf in place. I actually ended up adding two leaves to this pumpkin, but Dollar Tree does have a different shape of these leather leaves that I want to show you real quick in case you wanted to add those instead. I think that those would be so adorable. And Dollar Tree also does have the burlap leaves, which would be perfect for this DIY. Next, I'm going to follow those same steps to create another pumpkin, but this time with a tan fabric. I thought that it would be nice to have a variety of these pumpkins and these colors work really well together. I love this DIY because it is so simple. You don't even need glue or sewing. And this is a great one to do with kids. Of course, you want to help them out with cutting out that stem. But other than that, it's really family friendly and it is a fun DIY to do together because you can make a bunch of these pumpkins in no time. For my second pumpkin, I did end up cutting the hole slightly larger and that did work out better. Because this fabric is super thick, it was easier to tuck in. But if you are using a thinner fabric, you do want to keep that hole a little bit smaller. 
That way everything stays nice and snug when you add in your stem. These pumpkins have such a warm and cozy feel to them and trust me, once you make one, you are definitely going to want to make more. I ended up making four and two with leaves and two without. I'm not sure which style I like better yet. Let me know down below what you guys think. And if you wanted to make this one really look like the Pottery Barn one, you can just hot glue some twine right around that stem and I think that that would really go a long way in giving you that same Pottery Barn feel. And that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. You have to let me know down below in the comments which one was your favorite. I know I definitely have a favorite. The Gus the Ghost pillow is by far my favorite from this video. He is just so cute and sweet. I love seeing him sitting out on my couch and I cannot wait to make even more of him. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new here, please do consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to check out this video for some more Halloween fun.